I'm going to start at the front and kind of go through my boat, things I like about it, things, um, you know, maybe that I'm not too happy with, but let's go ahead and get into it here. We'll switch the camera around and I'll start, uh, well, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll work this way. So we're going to start from the, from the bow and work our way back. So first up on the front here, I've got an 80 pound thrust Minn Kota Fortrex. Um, the Fortrex and the Ultrax, man, they're great motors. This motor right here, um, the last one I had lasted eight years, and that's using it in salt water a lot. So if that don't tell you something about these motors, man, they are good quality motors. They're workhorses. Um, I love this motor. Kind of follow me around here, and I can kind of show you what's what's going on. I've got it. Uh, I've got it hooked up to a, a Humminbird 859. Um, uh, what is that? CI high def uh, or down imaging unit. You see the transducer right there. Now, another thing I, I, I thought was pretty cool, what I did with my boat, was I, um, I added this sea deck. Now, I had sea deck on it before, but it was, a, it was kind of a whitish camo, what they call, what they call snow camo. And I, basically, I, I just, I, I don't want to have to clean the boat. Not, I don't want to clean the boat that often, okay? Anyway, I really like this stuff. The last stuff I had on here lasted probably six years. Um, once you stick it on, it ain't going anywhere. This time I went with this, uh, with a teak color here. I like the teak because again, it doesn't show dirt and the boat is actually very dirty right now, but it doesn't show dirt. I can just hose it off and I don't have to worry about it. So this is good. It's also easy on your feet too. If you're standing all day up front, um, that non-skid, this, this gives you a little bit of padding. So um, that's nice. So the boat rides on a, um, a Wesco tandem axle aluminum trailer. Uh, which is perfect because I'm putting it in salt water a good bit. So I did a couple modifications to it. I, I have my I have my spare tire um, right down here, and then I added this toolbox, which I just keep a few basic things in there. I, I don't keep it locked, you know. If someone, man, if someone's that desperate wants to steal something, let them have it. I just keep, you know, I'll keep some wheel chocks in there, uh, ring free and stuff like that. I probably ought to, to lock lock it because that's a sixty bot sixty dollar bottle of fuel additive. But anyway, I hadn't anybody steal anything from that thing, and I've had it on there for like five years. Um, it's nice just to keep a couple odds and ends in there, stuff that, that might bust on your trailer, bolts, whatnot. So that's a pretty cool little little addition that I, uh, I added on to it. Let's go ahead and hop up into the boat and check out uh, the compartments. So as you can see, um, I am able to keep the boat in a garage, which is super nice um, to be able to do that. But... So this is basically the front deck here, what you're looking at. And let's go ahead and I'll show you some things that, uh, that I keep in my compartments. Uh, my, left, my left compartment there is for all my rods. I can fit anywhere. I can usually fit 20 to 25 rods in there. Um, I've only got just a, just a handful right now, but you can really load it up with rods. What I opted to do, they do come with rod holders that are built into the rod the rod locker, and I took those out. I just found it was easier just to lay them down in there. Rod sleeves work awesome to, you know, to keep your line and rods from getting tangled, tangled up. So I utilize those rod sleeves quite often on almost all of my outfits. Um, and that's a whole nother talk about that. But we're just going to go ahead and look in here. You know, my big front box, basically, we've just got, you know, miscellaneous tackle in there. Um, you know, not no big deal. That's just where we keep tackle. Um, this over here, we keep basically. Uh, I've got my rain gear in here. I have got uh, you know stuff to repair. You know, do do some real real oil rod repair tips. You know, repair rod tips, what have you. Um, gotta carry some toilet paper um, and also duct tape. Man, don't leave home without it. I love you know. You gotta keep some of these things on there all the time. I also keep you know a little uh, bottle of camp suds, which is biodegradable soap. You know. So uh, of course, got life jackets in here as well. And, uh, you know, just uh, I'll put my GoPro, whatever, and, and video equipment in here, too. But it, it's kind of a, a catch-all for some of the larger stuff. All right, moving to this center compartment here. Let's back that up. Um, the center compartment here, again, this is uh, just made basically for those Plano, uh, basically, the, I think they're the 3700 boxes or whatever. And um, I did some modifications here. I added this little tray on top. 
which is nice. And then, uh, you know, so I don't really utilize it quite the way it was meant to be utilized, but uh, I found it a good way to kind of keep my stuff organized and so that I can get to it pretty easily. Um, Triton um, does a great job. I've, I've, they've got a nice, you know, pretty good size um, cooler cooler right down here. So that's, that's it's pretty cool. Um, keep all your drinks cool uh, all day long. Um, so let's go ahead and, and check out the console here and see what we got going on. All right, so here's the deal. This is why all of a sudden I popped up. Well, at this point in the video editing process, man, I'm just getting sick of it. You know, it's like I'm trying to perfect everything as I go along, and it ain't working out. So basically, from this point on, uh, what you're gonna see, I just kind of, I just, I didn't even look at it. I don't even know what it is, but I just put it, I just threw it down there in the in the order that it came off the GoPro. And I have no idea what it is. So anyway, just tired of editing. That's all I got to say. So enjoy the rest of the show. Hopefully it won't. Wow. Okay, so here's, here's the console. Looking at the drivers, you know, from the driver's point of view. I've got, um, I've just got a regular small Lowrance right here. This is just kind of a backup. It's got a high speed transducer on it, so I am able to run, not full speed, but um, you know, pretty close to it, and still be able to to hit the to get the bottom um, readout. So I've also got a Humminbird. That's a, a Humminbird 999 um, high def, you know, uh, well, geez, high def. Um, side imaging unit. Now, now both my, my front depth finder and my depth finder at the console here, again, I've, I've been super happy with Humminbird. I love their electronics. These electronics are six years old, so they're a little outdated, but hey, they still work, and, um, you know, I'm happy with them. This stuff right here, uh, now again, this is a 1999 boat, and this stuff, as you can kind of see down here, I mean, it looks rough, and I've got a new panel that I got, I just need to replace, you know, to get that panel replaced and put all new switches in there, so that's, um, that, that's pretty much it. For that, I do have, um, I don't know if you can see this, so this switch right here, this is a deck light. I know a lot of people put, you know, the you know rigid industry, the LED lights all over on the interior of their boat, which looks really cool. But, but for me, what worked out best was using this this um, this light here. It gives me a total spotlight of the upper deck, uh, upper deck area, and it, you know, I can find all my stuff, tackle whatever in here. You don't stare directly into it because it will make you blind at night because it's it's halogen and. Um, it's, it's got a pretty powerful beam on it. And with that said, I can also use it almost as, as headlights, if you will, on, on a boat. So, you know, I can scan shoreline if I'm running at night. So it's, it's a nice safety feature to have too. And it works out again, really good for me and had that thing on the boat probably, you know, eight or nine, eight or nine years. Um, so we, we kind of look back here we you know these are not the original seats that came with the boat they they long since uh passed away i think these are 2006 triton seats so they are they do have springs in them um you know i i've, I've made some long boat runs with these seats and um I, i'll be honest my butt was getting a little sore after sitting in the you know sitting down in that seat for two hours so Again, uh, they're, the, the newer seats nowadays are so cushioned, it's, it's amazing. They, they keep your bum feeling pretty good the whole ride. Now, my center thing, again, that's not something I put that on myself. I didn't build it. I got it. I think I got that from Bass Cat. And um, it's a, this is a great little catch-all compartment. Man, it, it, this thing actually keeps stuff really dry. I keep, you know, I fishing, fishing licenses and stuff in there, uh, all my, my map chart cards and, and what have you. And, of course, you got to always keep some Tylenol and, and, you know, ibuprofen or something like that close at hand, too. Moving to the back deck now. Again, I... Um, I, before we move to the back deck, so you get a you can get a better idea here of of how I've I've got the cockpit and everything laid out with this C deck. I chose not to cover the whole boat basically because of cost for one. It would have cost about three grand to to cover the entire boat, and um, second of all, I just I I just kind of felt like 
I could get away with with what I have here if I put it in in high traffic areas that typically get the dirtiest, you know, or where I'm stepping. So we've got the cockpit covered, of course, the the lid there, and then as we work our way to the back deck, this is kind of a step up onto the back deck, but it also is a nice padding for your knees when you get down. And these live wells are super big um, in the Triton. I they work great as bait wells too. You know, if I'm saltwater fishing, I can keep menhaden, mullet, whatever alive in there. I've got t um, two uh, 500 gallon per hour. I think and they might be 800 gallon an hour pumps that can circulate water. So if one goes down, I have the other one too. So um, those live wells are the bomb. Um, super huge. Uh, it's just wish I could fill them up with bass one of these days. But okay, this compartment right here, uh, pretty important compartment. So I keep um, stuff that, that I might need in emergencies. Basically, I carry, I've got, a, I've got a spare bilge pump there that I, that I keep on board that all I have to do is, is just drop that anywhere, plug it in to, to, you know, my cigarette lighter adapter or hard, my, my cigarette lighter adapter or hardwire it, you know, on, you know, a hardwire right onto the battery or something like that and pump water out if I had to. Now, this is if it gets in the cockpit. So, um, basically, you take a wave over the bow, and this will pump it out of the cockpit before it gets down into the bilge and shorts batteries out. So, again, just a good, I, I always, you know, I like to be prepared. I've got a, um, of course, i got my throw cushion in here. I've got some rope because, you know, that's that helps, you know, you know, with that throw cushion. And then this box right here basically is, um, those are basically my tools. And, and, and I'll, that's kind of another video to show you what tools I carry. But that, those are in that, one of those Pelican boxes. So that keeps all the, uh, keeps all the tools nice and dry and they don't get, uh, they don't get rusty. So over on this, co this compartment right here, uh, basically I've got some extra oil in there and I got a motorcycle helmet. And, and again, if, um, uh, you know, a lot of people are like, well, why are you wearing a motorcycle helmet? Well, uh, it's, it's, really not so much for safety although i guess you could but it, no it's it's really just a total it's a comfort thing when when it's cold and you're running um it's it, it's nice to have a helmet on and and have that kind of have that kind of comfort so um again the helmet the helmet's a nice little half nice to have so an, another thing i wanted to, to show you that i carry on my boat right down here next to the seat is uh is one of these um noco genius boost i got the i got the uh this is the obviously this is oh, this is the gb40 right here man this little thing first of all you can um uh, you know, it's got a light on it and everything like that. Basically, a lithium battery, and I can hook this up if my motor, if I, my battery won't start my motor. Believe it or not, this thing's going to start it. Um, and I, I have used it. I've seen it in action, and I've used it a number of times, and, and uh, it works fantastic. It's also got these USB ports. It's got a USB in and a um, and a USB out, so that you can charge your phone. I can charge the GoPro battery. I can I can just this is a great thing to have on the boat. So, you know, I don't leave, I honestly don't leave without this thing in the boat. It stays in the boat. You only got to charge it depending on how much you use it. You know, you don't, if it just sits in the boat, you, you probably only have to put a charge on it, you know, once every couple of months or something. So, uh, again, Genius Boost GB40, um, good thing to have on the boat. Let's go ahead and um, let's walk around to the back here and we'll, we'll show you some things on the back. Now, the one thing that, it's, that I don't particularly like on this boat, now under here, this is where we've got all of our, and I'll let you take a look down in there. That's where our batteries are. That, that big one in the front is our starting battery. You can see, you can see, uh, you know, the, the, there's the, um, that's the battery charger right there. And then we've got our trolling motor batteries. And uh, that's basically where all of our electronics and everything are all uh, all hooked up to. So the, the thing that's that I don't like about this is it's hard to get down and around there and move around and, and get to stuff. A lot of the bass boats nowadays have much bigger um, bilge areas where you can it's it's easy to get to everything. So again, this is being a ninety nine, it is what it is. So I, I manage with it and have have uh, worked with you know 
plenty of worked on plenty of stuff down in there. It's just a, it's just kind of a pain. So anyway, moving to the back here now. I run um, a Yamaha. It's a 225 V Max show. The the motor right now. Um, this is a 2013. This is not obviously not a 99. Good motor. Um, I can't really I I can't really say much about it. Um, it's um, it is what it is what it is. You know, it's um, just like any motor. Uh, also, I've, of course, the boat's got a power pole on it. I only have one power pole because I put that on when they first came out and nobody was putting two power poles on, but now everyone's got two. And um, I just, I don't use it enough, I don't think, to, to justify getting two power poles. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you here. Um, these are, these are great right here, these ratchet straps. I don't have to like unhook a strap. I just, you know, it's all self-contained right there. So it's real easy to, to get the boat on and off the trailer with these, with these type of straps and they keep it, you know, they keep it really good and tight on there. I've got a, a, a jack plate. That's a six inch setback jack plate on here. Um, CMC power, power lift. It's a manual jack plate, not a, not a, uh, not a hydraulic one. So, you know, you got to, it, it, as you adjust it, you know, basically you got to pull the boat out of the water, adjust it a little bit, run the boat again, find that sweet spot, and then you know do what you have to. But again, it's not a man, it's not a hydraulic jack plate. So. All right, so um, just got my registration from uh, South Carolina DNR, so that's pretty cool. I got that, you know, got my 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 numbers on there so that I'm legal and um, anyway that's my boat right there I appreciate you um, you know taking the time to watch this I hope you found some tips feel free uh, feel free to ask any questions um, or if you've got any comments love to hear them later okay so if you made it this far hey I appreciate you hanging in there uh, hopefully you did get some good information out of this but again uh, I got to bookend this with something and, and, uh, you know, I don't have any, I have no sponsors and, you know, I'm not quite frankly, I am not going to bow down to anybody. I'm telling you what, there is absolutely no way I am good to bow down to anybody. So with that said, cheers, ta-ta, have a good day. Just kidding. Okay, so I gotta get I gotta come up with a title for this video, and obviously it was gonna be boat review, you know. And then I got to thinking about it, and I was like, man, no one no one's gonna care about that or anything. So so basically throughout the video editing process, man, I just I just I just fucking threw. I didn't edit nothing, man. I just threw that shit just to get it up on YouTube. As quick as I could. <laughs> Holy shit, man. I, I think I should call the... I'm trying to think of a name for this video. And I think I'm going to call it Get My Shit on YouTube as quick as possible. <laughs>